here I am, just in time for Feral Monday. I'm so excited. So, we used this palette last Monday. I can't believe it's been a whole week. Thank y'all. I was on a family trip, in case you're wondering where I was. Um, I just really wanted to spend a lot of quality time. I felt like that was very important. So, thank you for letting me. But we left off with this palette, and I want to use this. Maybe that. Whisper of this. <laughs> it's Feral Monday. Who knows where this makeup look is going to go. So lately, I've really been into see-through, transparent eyeshadow bases. If you've been with me a while, you know that at one time. Still love it. I just look at makeup um, the way that I would just look at seasons. It's just everything. We love everything at different times. We just, we're just doing different things and switching it up, and that's kind of what makes makeup so much fun. Um, we love clean canvas, but what clean canvas does, it completely blanks out and starts with a clean canvas. So you wouldn't see really my undertone, you wouldn't see anything. But with the transparent base like this, um, you're gonna see my actual undertone through it. You're gonna see my skin tone and it's it kind of just gives a different look to the eyeshadow. It's a, I don't wanna say even less glam, it's just something different. I also think this will be really fun with extreme smokiness. Something different. So we're just gonna go ahead and take this from our lash line and we'll take it all the way up to the brow bone. But listen, even though it's transparent, it's still gonna be smoothed out. So let's grab our C31 and just use some pressing motions and make sure that that is just completely even and smooth across our lid space here. Oh, this is really important. So I have my eye cream here, but I'm actually not gonna put it on. It's my Elemis. Look how much I've used already, I'm out of control. The reason why is because not these, it has nothing to do with this eyeshadow, but it has to do with the technique I'm going to use to get the most out of this eyeshadow here. We might have fallout. So I'm just not gonna put my eye cream on yet. I'd rather put it on later and, you know, not wipe it away. So, I've lost it again. Let me keep it here so I can remember to put it on. Um, I do have my moisturizer on too, but I think I'm gonna use this. Let me grab this. Look at how much I've used. I cannot stress enough how much I love this. Um, I do have a code. Let me talk about that code. Do I make a commission off that code? Yes, I will make money if you use this link. If you tap that link and then type in Rose and Ben, but that's the only way. And I always say, if you find a better deal than using my code, please use that. And I just, I appreciate your support. But this stuff right here, I cannot, I cannot stop using it. It honestly just feels so cooling and it helps with the redness in my cheeks. My, my cheeks stay flaring. So I actually kept this in my purse when I was traveling because when I travel, um, I tend to get a little, a little nervy nerve. <laughs> and then my cheeks just flare up. So I kept this in my purse and I have my brush here and it would just really help and it would calm my skin so much. So I can't recommend this enough. So let's go ahead and start with this color. We love a little bit of a transition. Something for that, we'll do this eye because I'm filming a TikTok. Something for that black to kind of melt into. And this also kind of creates a barrier for this intense black color. I feel like most of us tend to stay away from very dark colors, but this kind of slows the creeping. <laughs> we all know how black eyeshadow, we place it here, but by the time we're done, sometimes it can creep very high. So by just putting down a little bit of a transition, it's gonna stop that creeping. So try that. Isn't that pretty and pigmented though? So lovely. And then I'm gonna wipe my brush off on Sheila. Sheila needs a bath. And then, there shouldn't be anything left and we can just kind of transition into the brow bone. But this is a really good tip, y'all. Now I'm gonna take a lighter coverage, glowy powder foundation because I wanna keep everything very, very glowy, but I still want to smooth out this top part. My Makeup Forever one would be too full coverage and it would kind of just turn this into a very full coverage look, but this one right here is very glowy and it's a lot lighter coverage than that one. So this one's gonna be perfect. Just taking that and I'm tapping the top part and pressing it up into the brow bone area. So nice and smooth. Now it's time for the fun part, we're already there. I'm going to load up this brush. 
<laughs> I get so excited. Look at this on the brush. That's a night sky. You can't tell me any different. Now let me check here, make sure this is still nice and tacky. That feels nice. Now we're gonna build that up on the lid. See, fall out just a little bit. It's completely natural, especially because I'm packing this onto the lid and pressing that. Okay. Just keep pushing it onto the lid. Notice that I picked up quite a bit. We can just kind of cover this lid space. That is stunning. No, I don't want to take this up too high, so I'm about to wipe off my brush. I'm going to show you the entire process. Don't you worry. All right. Got our brush, let's wipe it on Sheila. Sheila's a makeup pal, by the way. It's not an animal. Sometimes you're like, are you wiping that on your cat? And I go, I love y'all, but what on earth would give y'all the idea that I would be out here wiping eyeshadow on a cat? Come here, Jean. <laughs> Never, okay, so we wipe that off. There's still, gonna, it's gonna be a little bit of sparkle, but we're gonna start to lightly tap this. And I want this to come out of the fold of my eye. And when I say fold of my eye, do you see how this this natural fold there, see that little line? We want the black to come out of that, but we want it to really soften as it goes up any higher than that. So I'm just gonna take the side of the brush and I'm gonna tilt my head back a little bit and I'm just gonna start to tap. Now, if you have a lot of fold, I'm gonna show you a brush. So this here is the E27. And it is just gonna fit in here so nicely. The shape of my eye, I could continue to tap and use this. But if you tend to have a little bit more hooded eye, a little bit more fold, tapping with this one because it's so small is gonna be so much easier. Do you see that? Okay, let's tap over here. And I'm using the side of the brush and a little bit of the tip. So I'm using through here and then this top part, just a little bit of the top part to start to smooth that. And I feel like with black eyeshadow, the smaller the brush, the better off that we're gonna be because black eyeshadow, when it wakes up in the morning, it says, listen, who can I betray today? Look at that, you see how that just smoothed that so quickly? Ooh, that's pretty. Beautiful, 10 out of 10. Now let's blend out this side. And then all I'll do is I'll just take a little bit of micellar water on our C30, which I'll show you, and then we'll just clean up that fallout. But for right now, I'm just gonna relax my eye. I need to wipe this off a little bit. Swiping it on Sheila, the towel. Okay, and then I'll we'll just continue to soften it. And then I might build up the black a little bit more or I might add something else. I don't know, it's Monday, I get wild. I have a million different things that I wanna try out. I love makeup, y'all. It is just so much fun. It's just my little art project in here. That's so pretty. All right, so what I'm doing here is I have a little bit of that black eyeshadow and I'm taking this black eyeshadow at an angle. Do you see how it's not coming over this fold too far? That would kind of drag my eye down. It wouldn't have this really nice lift. I still want to keep it rounded, pretty rounded, but what I don't want to do is have this not at an angle. So see how it's kind of starting to build towards the brow, towards the tail of the brow. Ooh, yeah, that's nice. Now to clean up, I just take micellar water on my C30. By the way, you can get this brush right here for free when you spend 135. But I just take that instead of doing wet wipes. And the reason I don't use that is because, for one thing, I do makeup so much, I please don't ever think of anything as judgment, but since I do makeup two to three to sometimes four times a day, sometimes even more, um, wet wipes, that's a lot of wet wipes. So I try to do this. And then also the reason I do it, it's so much more gentle around the eye area than continually wiping. So it's just so delicate. But yeah, please don't ever feel any judgment, but just know that I try to think about those things because I do it so often. I do it a lot. I love makeup. Now, this is all clean underneath here. Let's go in with our eye cream. We're using our one from Elemis, of course. And then my little brush, he makes it feel like a spa treatment. Yes. 
And then we're, well, I still have to finish up the eye, uh, but we're not gonna be using any more eyeshadow, really, not that kind, not the kind that'll have fallout because we'll, use, we'll be using a shimmer and a really small brush, so we're not gonna have fallout. So that's why we can go ahead and do this. And then as I'm putting this on, I wanna make sure that y'all know that this needs at least seven minutes, at least, to really sit on the skin and do what it's supposed to do. If I were to put concealer on this right now, or even in two minutes, it's not gonna be dried down. That concealer is gonna separate and it's not gonna wear well. So that's important. Now we're gonna need our E27. And then we need this color. It's good. Okay, notice it's just on the one side of the brush. Now I'm just wanna put a little bit here in the center of my lid. I really do wanna keep it contained just so it's a little whisper. And you know what I love about these? Besides the fact that they're super, super shiny? They're very see-through. Do you see how you can still see that black through there? I feel like I need to swatch all the shimmers for y'all. And what I feel is very popular right now and just just gorgeous is the fact that, I'm gonna, tap, I'm gonna tap that and then I'm gonna put it here, is the fact that you can still see my skin through it. See how when the light isn't hitting it, you can see my skin through it. Um, but then when the light hits, it's just a magical masterpiece. So we're doing gel liner and if we're talking gel liner, this one from Pretty Vulgar with an E26 is gonna be my absolute favorite. This is probably the blackest liner that I have now I will say that gel liners are always just gonna be the darkest. It's the formula, it's the concentration, it's just how the pigment looks. And this one right here is my favorite gel liner. This combo with the E20, I mean the E26 and this is, it's just an amazing, amazing combo. All right, there we go, easy peasy. I'm gonna grab that C30 again. Just sharpen up the wing. So we're doing a different style of lash, same brand. This is Roquel Beauty, but these are called Moon Gleam. And they are really fun. Still need to fix my other one. There we go. Okay, so I like the idea, and this is matching perfectly, I like the idea of matching this waterline to the center of the lid. That's me just marveling and how tiny little things like this just make such a difference. And it's so much fun. And I know that this eye is gonna be very intense for some of you, but just adding something like this to your waterline could just add so much pizzazz to your favorite makeup look. And I just think that's so fascinating about makeup. Just tiny little, tiny little whispers make such a difference. So most of my foundations are going to be a little bit too light for me. I haven't taken the time to go get darker shades. And it gets, it gets spicy priced. Mm -hmm. And I've talked about this tip so often, but I do have a lot of new friends here joining us. So what I like to do, and this is, this only gets you about one to two shades but it will help you stretch. So I'm gonna grab this cream bronzer here and I'm gonna apply that first. And underpainting, uh, it's, it's not new and that's really not what we're doing here. What I'm using this for is to just kind of darken up that foundation and I showed this many, many, many moons ago. I think it's been years now. But I'm gonna take this, this brush is a prototype, y'all just stay tuned. And I'm just gonna apply this just to the outer perimeter. And this is going to help darken our foundation a little, just a little bit. And I'm going to apply it a lot higher than I normally would. I also want you to notice that this bronzer isn't extremely dark for my skin tone. Um, I don't know if y'all have seen it. Do I have it? Uh, let me see if I have it. And I want to show you kind of what I, I don't want to use and, and, and kind of the color I don't want to use for this. This color. I love the formula and I love it. But, but for this, this is just so dark. And this, um, something like this, this color and this formula, because this formula stretches. And when I say stretches, it means it goes very, very, very far. And something like this, do you see how it just kind of keeps going and going and going and it's gonna cover up my entire hand? This is sometimes too, <laughs> too much for what we're wanting to do here. And you can see that color difference as well. 
I want to keep that bronzer in my undertone. You'll also notice this, the undertone that I'm using, the cream I'm using has a little bit more red in it and that's going to be better for my undertone. And then this would be a little too warm and a little bit too yellow, which would then change the color and the undertone of this foundation. Is this confusing? Yes, but I will continue to explain it. Um, sometimes I even get better at explaining things, but this is really important. So I want that bronzer to match my undertone when I put this on top and start to mix. So basically you want a bronzer closer to your undertone and you want something that's not just wildly pigmented because if I were to have used this, it would just kind of stretch everywhere and it would just be way too much and it would change the color of that foundation way too much aside from just darkening it just a hair. So that's why that's important. We're gonna grab our Tom Ford foundation and then I'm just going to dot that on. I love this foundation, by the way. I was so pleasantly surprised with how much I loved it because it was a very spicy price. And a little bit goes a long way. I mean, we still have a bunch in here. We got a lot. <laughs> Let's put that down before I break it and I'll chaos breaks loose. Let's grab our C42, start to work this in. And uh, this is gonna be different. So with underpainting, I kind of go around the edges first, but I really want that bronzer to kind of mix in with it, just to darken it a little bit so it matches my chest down here. So it's not really that same technique. I'm gonna start to grab here and I wanna take it everywhere because I'm using it as a darkener. Now we could use the mixing pigment. We have lots of videos on that, but that is best for really changing the depth. That foundation I have, it's still gonna work for me, but it just needs a little bit more of darkness to it. This brush is so nice. I love my C42. So again, let's grab it, start to move it around. Now this is a really big tip. Now, where I'm gonna take this foundation, it doesn't need to be darkened because we're just using the tiniest amount. And when you want the lightest, thinnest veil, the lightest coverage, you're gonna grab a fluffier brush. So we're gonna grab the E28, uh, sorry, the E29 for this. This is it labeled right there. So I'm gonna take that, see how little is on that brush? I'm gonna start here. And this is really what brings everything together to me. So tap it in there, kind of clean that up. And then we'll take it across here. Melty, melty. Look at how, look at this difference. Just look at it. Okay, so we're gonna use this Laura Geller concealer. While I was gone, I used this. I still love the Natasha Denona one, but I like this one. I feel like it was just really easy to blend. And it's a lot lighter, so it was a little bit more brightening. I really liked it. I switched off between this one and then, of course, the Natasha Denona one. I think y'all will like this one, too. It is very thin. And it's just, like, as you can see, it's just really easy to blend. Gene is not impressed. He's just going to go night-night. So we talk about using a small brush to work around these harder to reach areas, brighten through there, have that precision underneath the wing, really clean that up, and then we grab our foundation brush and then we melt it this way. So pretty. I will say that this one, I feel like it's easier to find deals on it as well. It's It can be more affordable than Natasha Denona. I don't feel like it's gonna go on sale or have any kind of deals anytime soon. So I really like this one, especially since you can find some deals on it. Blendy, 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 blendy. Yeah, I just checked and this is literally 30% off right now. You'll see it at the top when you go there. Um, so this one's just always having some kind of deal. So it does make it definitely more affordable. So whenever I do a little bit lighter under eye, normally what I'll do, and we all have preferences, I want you to do what makes your makeup part sing. But my under eye is definitely lighter than what I normally do. And that's kind of my vibe today. I want to be a little bit more glam. 
but what I'll do is I won't set it with a very brightening, super pink powder. I'll set it with a color a little bit closer to my skin tone. This is the Givenchy. I'm gonna set with this one today. This is shade four. So we're gonna press that in. Of course, we're using our puff here. And then whenever I use a concealer that's closer to my skin tone, that's normally when I'll use that pink. For me, I always like a little bit of balance. You can see that under eye is still a lot, it's extremely bright, but it's still not pink bright. It's not white powder bright. Ooh, that's pretty. For me, I just always enjoy a little bit of balance. Putting a super light powder on top of this might even cause a cast. Uh, I didn't wanna do that. But I still want to add a little bit more glow, so I'm going to grab my Makeup Forever powder in just a second. I'm going to go ahead and set the center with the Givenchy. Now, I feel like I haven't used a NARS bronzer in 1,000 years, and I just grabbed it. This is Laguna 03, and I'm kind of setting that cream with the powder. We talk about that. Make sure you're watching my recent reels. That's toasty and delicious. Now I am gonna hop off and I'm gonna film with Mario's new blush. I'm very excited. I am 99.9% .9 sure that I am absolutely gonna love that formula, but I haven't tried it yet because I've been gone. It's in Canada, Canada-ing. <laughs> we had such a nice time. Okay, I think that NARS bronzer just blended out like a dream. That's pretty. I'm gonna warm up my nose. I'm just gonna use whatever's left here. Jean's making goblin noises. And I'll be right back. Ooh, before I go, I'm gonna show you the color I'm gonna use. This is Mario's new blush formula. I'm very excited. Again, I haven't I haven't used it. I was gone. I, I'm only back because I have to show you. I'm gonna show you the color I'm gonna use because I really haven't seen everybody use this color. They were using this one, the perfect pink or perfect pink. Yeah, I'm excited to use this one, but I really wanna see that one. And I'm back because I want to show you that this is a cream formula. And it's important that I grab a little bit of my Makeup Forever powder here on my puff because it's going to make sure that we have a really nice transition here. And then we'll work that in. Because if I hadn't used that, this would have been super, super, super matte, matte, matte. And then it would have been a line of creaminess. So I've used this powder with creams and I have zero issues, but I definitely didn't want that matte line. All right, now I will be right back, but that was very important because we wanna keep that glow kind of consistent. And I feel like this powder just fakes a glow like no other powder I've ever seen. That literally just looks like dewy skin. Tell me now, I'm too excited. All right, let me go film this blush. All right. So I filmed it, it looks very pretty, but I wanna to wait to post the review. I'm excited to post the review. I'm gonna actually finish up the review. And I do have lots of thoughts, but I'm excited, yay! And now, where are we at? Let's finish underneath here. So I wanna put black underneath here, but I need it to really be tacky. So I'm gonna take a little bit of this that I tagged in the very beginning, the Milk Primer. I'm just putting this on my lash line. I want it really tacky. That way I don't have any fallout. No drama. We're gonna grab the E27. I'm gonna wipe it on Sheila. Back into the palette. No, quit, stop. Everything, it, I, I need to tidy. It's still been pretty chaotic. Now what I am gonna do is I'm gonna grab a very small amount. Grab that in the middle of that brush. Now if you don't trust yourself with fallout, you could, I do. I know exactly how much I just grabbed. Um, and also, what's going on here. So, but if you don't, just take your puff and kind of use it to catch fallout. But again, I, I know what I know what's going on here. I know that I'm gonna have to have a lot of faith in that very tacky primer. That is gorgeous. Ooh, that's pretty. I feel like we have learned so much today and it's exciting. This is really fun. I feel like I'm in a whole new, I feel like there's been a lot of new makeup releases and with those releases, it, there comes more education 
And that's what I love to do. I love to help you understand all of these new products that come out because there's always going to be science and innovation with makeup. And that's one of the things, one of the things that absolutely fascinates me, but we do get used to using say a powder blush. We're very used to this. This has been around for so many years, but something like a very wet balmy blush, which can be long lasting if paired properly and it has lots of benefits and even skincare sometimes in some of these formulas and that's so beneficial, but it takes education. Now we grab our fluffy brush and then I'm grabbing that first transition shade, the only transition shade really, and I'm just gonna press that right underneath. So while I was on the plane traveling, I, there's something I really enjoy doing. I feel like it really relaxes me. I don't have a fear of flying, but flying is just, it's, I don't find it just perfectly enjoyable. So something I'll do is I go through my camera roll. I'm talking to the very beginning and I'll scroll because this flight was four and a half hours. So I just scrolled and I realized that even from 2016, inner corner, like so much inner corner. And then I started thinking, man, I miss inner corner highlight. I still do a little bit, but I'm talking, it was intense. And I remember I used to try to find extreme things to highlight my inner corner with. So I kind of want to start doing that again. I love this eyeshadow palette. I feel like this is probably one of my favorites so far this year. And I love it because there's just so much fun time. Okay, that is just fun. And then the mattes are just fantastic. So right now we're using this shade, which looks very pink here, but there you can see it has the blue flip. And on my eye, it's going to look very blue, but I wanted to bring it up really far this way. And I want a lot of it on my eye. I can't be trusted. I was about to grab the wrong color. <laughs> oh, that's so pretty. And then we're just using our E27. And this brush works so well for so many things, but this is exactly what it was designed for. I am just going to tell y'all, this is such a fun palette and I highly recommend it. And the reason why is because it's just a really fun way to add a lot of spice to palettes that you might already have. I'm sure you have lots of palettes with this type of color and this type of color, um, definitely these neutrals, but the formulas on these shimmers and these shifts are just impeccable. And I, I just know that y'all are gonna love it. I know that it's something you're gonna reach for because you don't have to wear them all on your eye like I'm wearing them today. You could just do a pop of this color with this color right here or just this color. So there's just ways to, to incorporate this. And I just think y'all have so much fun with this palette. Now for lips, I'm gonna grab this from L'Oreal. This color is so gorgeous and I'm gonna do it first. Oh, this color is just so pretty. So affordable too. Um, 113. That's our shade today. And then I'm trying to decide what lip liner I wanna use. So I have a new favorite cool tone lip liner and it's from Natasha Denona. It's in the shade Stormy. And I think it's absolutely beautiful and it's so creamy and it just glides on. And I feel like it's not as dark as Endless Cacao, the, the classic cool tone that we've been using forever. So I like that better. I like that it's not as dark. It's still just as cool, but it's not as dark. Okay, we are all done. I can't wait to take the back camera so you can actually see the sparkle. It's so good. It's, it's super intense even with front camera, but wait till you see it with back camera. It's a 10 out of a 10. Also, I just love how glowy this is. If you're gonna like, if you like glow, you're gonna like this. Well, I'll finish that full review, but so far so good. Um, I have missed this. I have missed all of you. Tonight, I'm actually gonna post an ad. It's still gonna be helpful because it's about powder foundation, but it's a, it's a beautiful powder foundation. And I know that we all just like different things. So I wanna make sure that we all find something that we like in each category. That's what I'm here for. I'm here to help. I love y'all so much and I will see you tonight in the comments.